Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnus, speaking to Frankie Grande about summoning Sylvia, which is going to be in select theaters March 31st, and it's going to be on demand April 7th. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Hi, Petey. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm very grateful. I'm really excited to chat with you. I mean, th- this movie is a lot of fun, but the thing that kind of stands out to me is the genre bending components of it. You know, the, right. um, the horror component of it. Obviously, I'm a huge horror fan, but like it's funny. It's yeah. got the kind of mystery component of things. There's a lot going. Do you notice the genre bending components of this when you're reading the script for a movie like this? You know, honestly, I'm going to be completely honest with you. No, (laughs) I swear to God. Okay, so we shot this movie so fast. It was like in 30 days. So, so much of what was in the director's mind to me as an actor did not make sense until I saw it. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it, I was like, oh that's why we looked at the wall like it was just so funny (laughs) because like you know we shot this movie so fast like we barely had rehearsal so like i was like we are okay first of all we're nailing it i'm so proud of us and the whole cast and the director but no a lot of this genre bending um elements to it didn't necessarily come through in the script it was largely in director's head yeah so when i saw it i was like wow y'all are geniuses (laughs) good job (laughs) it's crazy because and i feel like you know you look at like some of my favorite movies growing up like i feel like genre bending wasn't planned frank you know what i mean i don't think people were like yeah like i'm gonna make like a horror comedy action because now i feel like it's strategic a little bit like i feel like there's some people that it's a trend right it's like hot sauce right Genre right 100 <laughs> percent. no i completely agree with you and i think that we have seen so many genre movies that i think our palette is a little tired of the same genre movie over and over again so yeah. we have to start genre bending and i think horror is a really fun way and a fun place to experiment in in this realm because um it is already such a broad and diverse category like so many things fall under the umbrella of horror and our little comedy thriller murder mystery horror is uh it's a really great way of of saying it absolutely it it really is isn't it um so yeah comma thriller oh comedy thriller mystery horror film is uh is well within the realm of possibilities these days you're no stranger to that kind of genre because one of my favorite movies i'm not even kidding you okay because i love this movie and it's great but like i love spree like spree was so good wasn't it so good that movie (laughs) i thought that movie was so good brilliant i spoke to david arquette like a couple of months ago about yeah. another project i brought that up and he seems super stoked to talk about that one too right <laughs> wait because i mean that was another one that we had such a fun time shooting it but also like the, the director was so smart and wrote all of those comments himself like wow. if you watch spree on a big screen tv and pause and read those comments Every single one was handwritten by the director, and they are so funny. Yeah. The comments themselves, which are flying by in milliseconds, so you really need to pay attention in order to see them, are so are like add so much to the film. Were you so, consulted yeah. a little bit here and there about some of the content creation, social media components? Because you might be a little expert on that. Like, right. Like I mean, <laughs> I was yes, very much. Uh, he really allowed me to, and I had I had a lot of input on set. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was like, well would you do if you were vlogging this if you were live streaming this if you were posting this on instagram and then he let me kind of direct all of that footage that you see from my camera is my camera like i shot all of that so um yeah he just really kind of let us have some fun and that was really great and listen to everything that i said that i wanted to do absolutely Um, but it was also so fun to just like be in that car you know Mm. like we were we were (laughs) locked in a car together just the four of us and uh you know oh no it's kirk kunkel stunt driving (laughs) and i was we were on hollywood boulevard and we were stunt driving and it was just crazy and we were like whoa whoa like those reactions are real because we were in scary driving situations Yeah, absolutely getting back to something sylvia you're gonna look at a script and there's gonna be a moment where you're gonna go yep or like okay i love this Mm -hmm. and in a lot of situations there's many of those moments right and i feel like that's kind of one of those things what was something about this script that you really were like yep 
this is it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in. Like, was there anything specific? Was it a character? Well, was it a storyline? Like, I mean, uh, first of all, directed by Wesley Taylor and Alex Wise, like had me at the jump. You know, mm-hmm. written and directed by because there are some people. There are two two people that I've admired for a very long time, um, and worked with them on Indoor Boys. So immediately I was like, yeah, I'm in. But um, I think that it has so much heart. And I think that there is um, often in these like we can we can almost add, you know, like uh, kind of like drama, romance, comedy. Like there is there's another genre in there, which is like that there is so much heart behind these characters. Um, and I often see scripts in this business where it when there is a gay character, it is like the first line out of their mouth is like, Yas queen work, boo boo kitty. Like we love Yas queen. Yas get it. Like, you know, yeah. it's it's very stereotypical. Yeah. And I think that our our characters, our our gay queer characters in this film, and by the way, there's a lot of them, you know, it's LGBTQ plus entirely led, uh, directed, created, produced uh, team uh, is they're they're real. They're real. Yeah. They are fully formed. You know, my character, Nico, is not afraid to go toe to toe with some very heteronormative energies in this movie. Um, and it's a really fun, a fun depiction of LGBTQ plus people as just kind of like part of the culture rather than being like a subculture. It's a fun film. It's a scary film. It's a funny film. And most importantly, it's an important film. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think it's going to, you know, do a lot. I think, you know, um, queer characters have obviously been featured in a lot of the horror films. It's yeah, a great course. genre for queer characters. Um, but often we're the first people to die or, you know, uh, we're just we're not the main characters or it's not an entirely queer cast. So this being an entirely queer cast is is really exciting. I think. Absolutely. It's interesting because I look at content creation and I look at the hustle and the drive of kind of putting all this content on a lot of different platforms. I feel like some people kind of don't realize that, yeah, people might have their kind of platform where they get the most followers, like their TikTok and everything, but Mm -hmm. there's a lot of social media platforms out there. And for us, like for Popternative, like we're really big on Instagram, but we have other platforms as well. And we want to kind of make sure that we're not just posting the same things on our Instagram, because if we're posting the same things on our Instagram, that we're posting on Facebook and Twitter, they don't have to follow us on all of them. They can just follow us on one, right? And everything. Right. How important is it for you as a storyteller, content creator, to be able to create kind of different content for different kind of platforms? Because I feel like that's something that we don't talk about a lot. You know what I mean? No, we don't. And there's different things that uh, algorithmically trend on different platforms and you never know what's going to be what. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll do some TikTok oriented uh, creations. And if they flop on TikTok and go absolutely nowhere, I'll throw it on reels and it'll have like 2 million views. And I'm like, how, how? And then sometimes it'll be the opposite way around. So, you know, it's just, we've gotten a place where it's kind of like uh, because of these computers, that we don't see and these algorithms that we don't understand and we can't comprehend it's just like throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks and what flies and you kind of have to do different things on different platforms and kind of get creative like i've noticed um instagram is probably is like a really good place to talk about you know sobriety whereas on tiktok they really don't have it I, that audience hasn't come to me yet they just want to see me do silly dances yep. so it's like you just kind of have to figure it out by through trial and error and use each platform to the audience audience that has come to follow you there it's interesting too because for us as well you know we have our interviews but we have other content as well and sometimes we like um put like the full interviews then we have clips right of like kind of highlights and everything and it's like it's not that hard to kind of see what people like like people love audition stories like people love to hear about someone yeah like people love that you know what i mean and like people love behind the scenes like one of the things that i love to do is people love how things were made or like kind of what you talked about with the directors and kind of looking at the script. Like people love that. Right. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. it's see, it's, it's, it's throwing things the wall, seeing what sticks, Mm -hmm. but it's like experimenting a little bit until you know what kind of works for you. You know what I mean? hundred percent. I'll tell you, it was 120 degrees in New York city when we made (laughs) summoning Sylvia and we were not allowed to have air conditioning running in that house because it is too loud. It was an old, old spooky, scary house. So there was no internal air conditioning. So we had to turn off those, those AC units and those windows for basically the whole time. And we were 
dying and that's a clip heat. from my youtube and my instagram there's certain things like weather is not controlling like like you can't control the weather obviously <laughs> even though there's no. some people on there that think that they probably can like these no <laughs> and you know when we were trying on outfits with my stylist mondo in los angeles at a beautiful 70 degrees it did not occur to us the pleather was not the way to go it just didn't occur to us but then when we got on set we were like this should be caught we should be linen these should be linen pants i wish they were linen <laughs> what do you think about the podcast boom what do you think about the pot like this because there has been they've been around for a, a good amount of time like yeah. our sh like we're a full out media outlet now we're a pop culture outlet but we started in 2015 frankly as like a podcast right it was just yeah. chats and everything but like now you're seeing you know um like the wizard like a lot of like the wizard Willie plays pod and all that and everything you're seeing all these podcasts come out like what do you think specifically about the podcast landscape now like it's exploded like everyone has a podcast now well i think that it's good because then every uh person can listen to things at their leisure like yeah. i think that the reason why it replaced radio so quickly is because when you tune into a radio station on your drive home it has to be what you want to hear yeah. like you have to if your commute is from five to seven and the person that you're that you love that is your d radio dj host disc jockey whatever you want to call them was playing from three to four you're screwed yeah so with a podcast you get to hear what you want when you want to hear it and it's still got that kind of radio talk vibe that ever has been around forever and ever and ever it's just kind of on demand it's on demand radio is all it is so that's why i like it there's a lot of people that want to act and then they end up doing content creation. There's a lot of people that want to create content right. and then they want to act and then they act. What do you think about those, th that kind of tag team of like the acting storytelling and then the content creation? I mean, the, I don't, I feel like what, do you, like, what do you all think about influencer? I'm, I'm starting to not use influencer as much anymore. Right. I feel like sure. that term is not Content happening. creator. Content creator, exactly. What do yeah. you think about that kind of back and forth stream? Yeah, well, I mean, as someone who's done it, it is, uh, it's difficult to flip flop too much because uh, casting directors don't take you seriously. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, something that has been really difficult for me, you know, as a Broadway actor and performer, you know, obviously, I went to school for acting, I trained in acting, uh, became was on Broadway at 23 years old in Mamma Mia. But then once I did Big Brother and my reality TV stint, I was very much largely branded as a personality. Yeah. And as, uh, you know, as a host, as someone who was not an actor um so i've kind of it, but listen big brother gave me my career so i'm very grateful yeah. for it but um i have had to reprogram the mind of every single casting director i've ever met um in order to view me as the pr the the career that i actually chose well, it's a blessing the career and a curse, that i went to sounds school like mostly for a curse sometimes basically it is <laughs> It is very difficult because yes, you they they look at your because every casting director, what do they first do? They open your Instagram. They say, How many followers does this person have? Is the first thing they do. Yeah. Um, then they might listen to whether or not you're talented. So then it's like, oh, okay, cool. So it's great to have, you know, the 2.1 million followers. Yeah. Um, but then and then you get and then get to back it up. But even just sometimes getting those first auditions is hard because they're like, no, that's a, your personality. You know, you you exist on social media. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm I was trained an actor. So um, I'm excited for this film, especially because this character is very, very different from who I am as a person. Yeah. As my personality is not really in this film. Like you are not seeing Frankie Grande at all. You're seeing Nico and Nico is very different from Frankie. Well, that's the so, best thing about storytelling and acting is kind of yeah. diving into all these different worlds, transforming, mm. basically playing pretend for a living. A lot of people refer to yeah. it as that's like the best part about storytelling is diving in to all these different characters, right? Yeah. And I have another friend from Mamma Mia on Broadway who is now a famous TikToker and is saying the same thing. It's like, you know, it's hard to be considered. It's hard for people to take you seriously at an audition. And it's like, but but that's where we started. Yeah. You know, like. Oh, absolutely. It, it's interesting um, to me, too, because it, you know, I, what we do, what I do right now, too, is, you know, someone has a lot of followers and everything. I love I look at like the reels on Instagram. I want to see the engagement and I want to see. But I want to see the engagement and the views on the Instagram. Like, I want to see the engagement. I want to see the views on the channel because that's inter they're two different things. Right. There's the followers. Right. That maybe you did something really viral and everything and you're just kind of there and you stay there. But then right. maybe the content isn't as pop in popping. you have one yeah, viral exactly. video 
Yeah, I think the, because now the algorithms have shifted again, like engagement is is down specifically across yeah. all platforms. Mm -hmm. um, so I think engagement is also going to kind of go away Interesting. Um, yeah. as a as a factor of whether or not this person is being interacted with, because it's actually I don't think it's telling the truth anymore. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, engagement drop across all platforms mm -hmm. on all, all of my favorite people that I follow. Uh, so I think that it's going to be, again, I think it should just be about like looking at their content yeah. and saying like, do you like this? Yeah. You know, if you do, because people aren't double down. It's not the likes are down. Everything is down. It's very interesting what will go, um, get likes and what won't. It's, it's a mystery. It but is also, literally a mystery too, these days. You, you're on YouTube as well, right? Or um, I, I, not anymore. Well, you I mean, used I to, have you it. at one point were yeah. like, that algorithm sometimes is like, you think you've cracked it, and then, some, and then it's like you yeah, don't. Yeah, now there's YouTube it. Reels, which is like, okay, oh, yeah. God, something else to do. I know, something else Yikes. to do. But you know what they can do really soon is they can watch Summoning Sylvia, right? They can do that, and I think that's great, and I want everyone to do that, please. Because they're um, gonna, it's going to be in theaters, select theaters on the 31st of, of March, and then it's going to yeah. be on digital uh, and demand on the 7th. So there's yes. going to be different ways for them to check it out. Um, yeah, and, and it's an hour and 15 minutes. So just enjoy it. Have uh, a great time. I love a short, short, quick little film. It's absolutely. fabulous. Frankie, thank you so much for your time. It was great chatting with you. Thank you so much. It was great to chat to you too, PD. Absolutely. And plug away. I mean, we talked about the movie, but like, where's the main kind of fun content we could check out right now i mean there's there if you put frankie grande you're on most of them right but it's yeah, frankie j yeah frankie j grande on instagram uh TikTok, twitter we're still using twitter and uh you know also on youtube and you can check out some of my old old youtube videos which are hysterical if you want some fun content i go back and i'm like wow you were psychotic and that was fun <laughs> absolutely well this has been pop turn if youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes frank grande is starring in summoning sylvia in select Mark. theaters march 31st and it's going to be in uh, uh on demand april 7th until next yep. time this is frankie and pd beats signing off thank you for tuning in to pop turnative make sure to check out our past episodes of pop turnative on youtube be sure to like pop turnative on facebook and follow us on twitter This has been an Autograph Communications production.